And we're live on this wonderful Friday evening. I had to think about that for a second there. Hello, everyone. My name is Mixlex Horowitz. I use they, them pronouns. And, I, oh, and I hear Sabu coming. There she is. Sabu. Sabu, what pronouns do you use? Come to the camera. Tell the camera, girl. Give me mama. Sabu. She can't tell me, so we actually don't know. I guess we should use all pronouns or just gender neutral pronouns. Because we will never know because Sabu can't tell me. All right, back to the conversation though. As you can see, my hair is disheveled and it's gonna remain this way for the conversation and that's okay because life will throw things at us that we weren't ready for. And it's, it'll still be okay that my hair will be in my face for the entire conversation. And most importantly, I, first of all, must send, oh, this, there we go. I want to make sure that I am tagging. Why is it not letting me? Here we go. Oh, I'm going to put both Zaria, Zaria, and my Instagram here for us before we start. Yes, here we go. And we're working it. We're working it. Hello. Hi. Oh my gosh, we're finally doing it. Oh no. It's been so long. <laughs> I know. Oh my god. Okay, so for people that don't know, we Zari and I have been talking for a while now on social media. That's like, mm. oh my gosh, you're so cool. Like, I want to get to know you. You're kicking butt. Mm. All these unreal things <laughs> and are getting this conversation together. It's an honor. Oh my goodness. And so to start off, to share your name, your pronouns, and then that you use Wait, it's like it's, it's it's like breaking up. It's like breaking up, going in and out. Hang on, no, one second. I don't like that. Um, one sec. Hmm. Is it doing? Is it doing the same thing? Hmm. Here we go. Here we go. We're going on an adventure in my apartment. Here we go. We're gonna find the Wi-Fi. We're gonna find the Wi-Fi. Okay. No. Okay. I'm gonna try again. Okay. We are trying to figure out why we're not getting Wi-Fi when we normally get Wi-Fi. Okay. We're gonna keep trying. We're gonna try and get. Oh, you know what I can do though? I technology. Okay, let's see. Let's see. We can do this. I got my headphones. Maybe this will help. Okay. I have faith. Okay. I hope that does this work? We hope. Yes. Right. Okay, perfect. It's better. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So could could you share your name, your pronouns, and then if you have any identity terms that you like to use for yourself? Okay, so uh my name is Exaria James. Uh my pronouns are he, she, her, queen, that girl. <laughs> um and I mean, yes. I mean, just, it's, it's whatever. Like I'm just, I'm just me, and that's that. So yeah. Yes, absolutely. And so, and yes, what me. what do you do? What profession? Okay, so I actually oh, work in healthcare. Huh? Yeah. So wait, did you want to? Well, yeah. So um, I work in healthcare. Um, I actually work for Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, so there I work in customer retention, that sort of thing. So it's a lot of 
dealing with members on a daily basis. Um, it's a lot. It's actually a lot. Filing complaints, looking for doctors, that sort of thing. So um, it's very rewarding. It's amazing. I get to encounter a lot of people and really help people. And that's really what I wanted to focus on. Prior to I was working for a hotel. I've managed like Hilton, Marriott. Like I worked for Uber Corporate out in LA. Um, so on a professional realm, like I've kind of, that's always been me. So yeah. And then earlier this year, I, um, how do you say, I form, formulated my own LLC. Um, so I have my partner just with like Plume and a few others. There may be some advertising that you see go out every now and again, but a lot of times it's mostly just towards the LGBTQ, just raising awareness. Um, that's really what I wanted my entire, my personal entire journey to be built upon was advocating for LGBTQ, X, Y, Z, plus, 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 plus. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh, wait, tell me more about this LLC. Like, so, that's wild. Well, it's called Exaria James LLC, just namesake company, basically. Um, so, Perfect. really, like, I really wanted to just 2020 when COVID-19 shut everybody down I really wanted to use that time to kind of really come back mm. in the game 10 times stronger 10 times harder um, and there had just been presented a lot of different opportunities and when I look at generating revenue personally like per, like corporate wise versus just you know outbound things from my like social media like I really wanted to keep those two forms of income separate you know and yeah. This is really a way to organize finances, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I mean, it we are. Mind, yes, yes, and yes. here we are. And also, <laughs> earlier, was it earlier this year or was it the end of last year about finishing schooling with that? It's master's, right? Okay, so I actually graduated from Johnson & Wales University. It's a private university here in Miami back in 2016 with a bachelor's degree um, in hospitality management and tourism. And then I actually, during COVID-19, um, Florida International University, they actually hosted a course and I put it all out because they were they were offering this course for free. Like it was, a tip, it was a executive certificate for hospitality management and tourism. So I actually finished that in like three weeks, um, like literally in the first month of COVID-19. So yeah, and then I'm actually enrolling back for my master's degree in healthcare administration at Bayer University, so I'll be starting there soon. I really haven't announced it just because it's been so much oh my going God. on. Oh so, yeah, I, I'm, oh one, my I'm, yeah, I'm one of those girls. Like, I've always been just book smart. I've always been pro-education because I really feel like it's what opens the door for you to be able to cross over. And me going from working in hotels with no, no kind of, you know, medical terminology whatsoever mm. for me to make that transition into a different field. Like, it really was my education and then not only to be trans as well to be jumping across many platforms so i really stand strongly behind education and it's truly helped me so those that will see this um i really really hope to continue to push that also last year um i keynote spoke at fiu uh, at their transgender remembrance uh ceremony so that was another great opportunity to kind of actually meet with people my age i'm 26 um, and so just to connect with yes. the student body, yes, so to connect with the student body, like, you know, we're not that different in age, like, it was really impactful, so, I feel a lot, I feel like I've done wow. a such a period of time, yes, and I'm I, one year six I'm months. I'm still digesting, I'm what? still digesting all of the gloriousness, like, oh keep going, God. feed me all of this, oh. yes, <laughs> I am just oh. taking it all in. It's not been easy. I would definitely say it's not easy. Education is very challenging and they make it challenging because, you know, it's, it's, you're taking the next step in your, in your life, you know? And so um, it's important, but it, it's what you put in is what you get out of it. And so for me to mm. wind up at Blue Cross Blue Shield, getting ready to schedule all the rest of my surgeries literally this month, like it's, it's such a rewarding, yes, day of my drive. Oh my God! Yeah, so, yeah, I'm getting ready to so I'm getting ready to schedule all the rest of my surgeries. They're all covered from my company, um, and so it's just like face, breast, bottom surgery. Like I'm just so excited to be able to 
wrap everything up in literally like under two years. So. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy that you're able to do that for yourself. Like, I, like, oh my gosh, wow. I also just want to say like, I'm, uh, I'm so happy for you. I'm like, I, I'm like crying right now, so I don't even like have <laughs> oh <my God>. words. <laughs> but because the truth is that like, obvious, like for those out there who think differently, let me correct you. Trans people do not need surgeries. We do not need to medicalize our bodies. We don't need hormones. We don't need to dress a certain way or look a certain way or speak a certain way, whatever. But let me tell you something. We have every gosh darn right in the world to yes. be affirmed and euphoric in our bodies and our minds and in our lives. And so the fact yeah. that we are on this journey and it is. It is like, definitely a, what it it's, is here. it's a journey. A journey. It's, it's sure. an entire journey. And I definitely think that like when it comes down to having surgeries and that kind of thing, like for me, like I love wearing makeup. You know what I mean? I love wearing makeup. It's my thing. It's my go-to. But at the same time, like, I really just want to feel a little bit more comfortable. And, mm. you know, it's just, I don't know, like, being trans, it's it's such a different experience. Like, you just really never know. I feel like you're always on guard. You're always kind of just nervous, like, in a lot of different situations. So it's just, I just want to feel personally a little bit more comfortable with myself. I love myself. I love who I've grown into, and I've enjoyed every step of that way. But... You know, I just kind of want to enjoy fully me the way that I envision me. And no one sees you the way you do. So I'm mm. just excited to take the next step and come on out. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Okay, wait. So that is wild. And I'm just thinking when we when we first started to like try to piece together what our conversation was going to look like mm -hmm. amongst many things we're both models and we we put ourselves <laughs> out there and we bless the world with our presence you and know what how does it feel for you <laughs> yeah right like that is what it is oh like <laughs> people need to people need this people need they, yeah. this you know what? right <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> so, and you, can we share a little bit more about you? For example, like I've just been running my mouth. I want to know oh my about gosh. you as well. You've done so much okay. too. And uh, I, I will share a little bit, but I am, I just need to know everything about you because you are just a powerhouse. I mean, okay. Not, well, not only have we talked about like so many different things, we're talking about the importance of education and how, affirmation and euphoria and safety in our bodies and how you have your own LLC and your own courses and going back to school and are literally like if I if someone were to say like who who is doing the most and like is just out there rocking it like like doing the most and like the world is better for it I like I select you Oh like God. that is, I mean, it, like it is living is hard. <laughs> Waking yes. up in the morning is hard. And it the fact is. that like you're not only waking up, but you're like, I'm getting this. I'm getting the things that I need. I'm establishing myself. I'm supporting myself and my community. I just, I just need to make sure that like you are so celebrated and uplifted in all of that because it cannot be downplayed it really can't you know what i think that i feel like i'm genuinely i've had a lot of support along the way um when i first started my transition i'm one year six months one year seven months like right now um and when i first and started, is that when you came to your your understanding of yourself as trans or is that yes Okay. Yes. That no. Well, okay. So we could say we give it two full years at this point okay. now, um, where it's just kind of been that understanding. But like to actually go full time and be in a corporate setting and literally do my transition throughout corporate establishments, like that really took a lot out of me, um, to the point that I had to just give it some time and just say, you know what? Mm, mm -mm. You know what I mean? Give it some time. Yeah. Let it settle in. Work on other things. Um, last year I filmed a docu series. Um, I had did a little work for Miami Beach Pride, 
um, jumping on the committee there. I've been a part of the National LGBTQ Task Force now for two years. So we're actually getting ready to go into this gala that we're throwing. They have their huge end of the year gala. Last year was phenomenal, honey. When I tell you, it was phenomenal. And so I've done, I've just, you know, I've, I've, it, it's, I've gained a lot of support along the way. But you know, when you first start your transition, you have a lot of people that are at you like, I don't know if it's going to work out for her. Like, you really have a lot of that. So um, I think a lot, uh, you get the pressure. You get a lot of pressure from your community. You get a lot of pressure from people that you know, old friends, old family. Um, and you really just have to embrace all of it and just kind of give it back like 10 times harder. And that was just kind of my goal. And even in some of my like most downest moments, like I still was smiling. I still was doing me. I still was pushing, pushing, pushing so that I could be here today. And even today, I'm still pushing, pushing, pushing. Although some might be like, no, don't do this or no, don't do that. Like, you don't need to do that. Like, you know, when it comes down to affirmation surgeries, you know, it's just kind of like, no, I feel like I need to do this for me. Yeah, for you're you. Like, you're you literally for cannot me. tell me what to you do. Know? <laughs> and people just don't, they just, I don't know. I, yeah. Well, people. You just can't worry about it. Yeah. You, have to, you have to have that goal. And then also, too, like, I know with the trans girls, like, Coming out, it's just like people automatically just give you so much animosity. They give you so much mm. about what it's been or what it was. And you know what I mean? And so really, like, I really wanted to take my entire transition and really just change the entire narrative of how trans women are viewed. Because, you know, it's just like it's a story that's really not told that often. We get, you know, we get showcased in a way that allow society to view us as begging for acceptance. You know what I mean? Mm, Very rarely do you see the trans person being acknowledged or highlighted for the army that's been built or, you know what I mean, for their goals. Yeah. Or, you know, even if you, like, it's so much more that we still want. And so I really wanted my transition to really just tear up corporate, just tear up, you know, education because we are people too. And, you know, it's like, it's time for a new story. So... Yeah, I just so fully send all of that <laughs> because that that honestly that makes this makes sense. The reason why I feel like I'm one of the many reasons why we we vibe so well and we just relate so well is because we just get we we one just get that as the com as a very common unfortunate narrative of like folks who are trans, non-binary, etc. Mm -hmm. But it also the fact that we're both like very purposefully putting in the yes. work to re to rewrite our narrative and to not have the trans narrative be written by Yes, yes, yes. I think that is so important that we start getting away from it because when you look at like the youth that's coming up, like who are their idols? Like how do they take the next step? Is there only one story for them to see? So it's just so important that we start really pushing ourselves forward and there's a lot of people that are out here making the strides in community. There's a lot of people that are on social media. I hear a lot of complaining on social media as well, but it's like, who's actually doing the work? Who's actually taking part? Who's actually getting out there and making things happen and being that role model for our youth to come up? Um, I have worked with, um, they're called Pride Lines. It's a LGBTQ youth, um, how do you say, like a youth community center here in Miami. And stepping in there, I had actually went there for a letter for, um, how do you say it, gender affirming surgeries. So you don't even have to go through like the, the psych evaluations and everything. Um, but just being in that facility, being around kids, being able to walk in in a suit, being able to walk in and just kind of talk to them one on one. Like, yes, I know it may be hard right now. I know you're going through the parent situation. You're going through a lot of different things right now. But just understand that there's a place for you in this world. You know, and you it's just you have to be that that role model for people to kind of just look up to and just you know, it's it's oh yeah it's more to Hollywood, LA, it's more to all of that than all of that. And that's one in a million, you know, that's one out of six thousand, for example. So where are your everyday girls? Where are your everyday girls that have jobs? Where are your everyday girls that are out here really just trying to make a difference and provide a living for their family? So I just wanted a different story. I really wanted a different narrative and baby. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
that is the summary of why I am doing everything that I'm doing for yes. for real. Because it would not take it would not have taken me twenty one years of my life to understand my identity had mm -hmm. I had the role models or the, the news writing about the triumphs and the the glory that comes with being mm -hmm. in the LGBT community versus the violence and the harassment yes. and the dehumanizing nature yeah. of just about everything that comes out from mainstream media about trans people. Yeah. And so I had the language for, like, I knew that trans people existed, but the way that I was told trans, like, the way that I was informed about who trans people are, and, like, I'm, I'm not really saying this right, pretty much the, I had such a negative perception, or not even perception, yes. but values held on to what it meant to be LGBTQ, what it meant to be like trans specifically because of what the news and the media and the stories and the the awful just transphobia of society was that it took me until taking academic courses on LGBTQ topics that I was oh, like, wow. huh, there's a safe wow. place for me to actually explore and understand mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. what this all means. And oh it isn't God. a death sentence. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. I have to say bye to my family. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that I am not loved. Like those are mm -hmm. all certainly things that still worry me and are horrifying. And like we're talking about like with safety and navigating, whether it's physical spaces or mental, emotional spaces with family and friends or coworkers, like what literally whatever it is. And so rewriting the narrative is such important work. It is. It really is. I will tell you, Verona, one of my mom's good friends, um, she was trans and she would come around and she knew I was going to be gay. She had told my mom this growing up. It didn't come out that I was trans until after college, after I spent a lot more time with myself. But um, anytime she would come around, like, and she would talk or she would tell her stories and everything, like, I was just so infatuated with her. I loved her so much. Um, but she was always fighting somebody like you know she is mm. in the grocery store and someone's making a, a rude comment you know what I mean that kind of thing and so it was always some kind of negativity around the whole situation or in the midst of even saying oh my gosh you know my owner had a beautiful gown on a seven thousand dollar gown but following that was always something else that was just completely left so like you said like there's so much in the media, there's so much around just the trans narrative in itself, and not a lot of it is that positive. So, you know, it really does take people like us to kind of really step in and change that, you know, because there are quite a few people that I've met on this journey along through my activism work that have moved me, that have really given me the power and the spirit to keep going. You've been in contact with me several times just throughout with collabs and partnerships and you know what I mean? And it's really just about like that extra little support, like, you know, and just, you know, and then we're here today on live, chatting it up. Like we've known each other yeah. our whole lives and we've been working on <laughs> Instagram down for a few months now. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Like it really just is amazing. And I will say this as a trans person, like I would just love to see more wins of us on social media because a lot of it is around, you know, this person passed away during this time and it's last year I remember waking up every morning I woke up I felt like I was waking up to something negative so it just really wanted me I just really wanted in that point to be able to wake up and change that narrative let me put out something that's going to be positive that's going to help my next sister you know the girls message me they DM me all day 24 7 and I'm always responsive I'm always writing back because you just really want to give someone that that's just I love you. You know what I mean? So we just have to we have to build a community where we stand together, where we're strong. You know, I think that it's just so important. It's so, so, so important for us to stand together because together we're unstoppable. Together you'll make it to Hollywood. Together you'll be, you know, walking down the right way like you. Come on out and <laughs> you know, really just tear it up and on and those you have to really on those spaces that we occupy and make sure that we're leaving room to open the door for others to walk through that same 
um, that same space. And that's so important too. It's so important. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I'm so glad that you said like opening up the doors to like, or like just like mm. pretty much making the path into spaces that trans people yes. haven't been able to access. I'm not, it's not haven't been able to, it's been like purposefully barred from, uh, purposefully mm -hmm. written out of the narrative uh, yeah. or like all of those things. And, but it's come to, I mean, it's always been with activism, right? Like enough is enough, right? Like yeah. human decency at the very least, but then, mm -hmm. It takes it takes a community, and that is one of my like the fact that I have grown and become a stronger person because mm -hmm. I'm engaging with people that I've just met online from the community, and especially during COVID, because yeah. whereas I can't meet new people in person, nor do I want to, because I'm horrified of getting COVID, I get to still have these genuine connections and community and work with other people on the same goals right like we don't have to do it alone this is yes. so much to do god yes. we are not doing this alone it is everywhere every city every city, every state everywhere is a totally different battleground you know what i mean so it's, yes. it's great it's and great also the fact yes yes and oh my gosh i just need to say like I understand modeling as many different things. Like, I see my modeling as activism. Like, I see it as activism as, like, a form of visibility. I see it as redefining beauty standards and, like, what it means to be confident and to be seen. And so, like, I, when I do my modeling gigs, I'm just, like, I'm going to re, like, I'm going to break apart your world. I'm going to show you what beauty is. Like, <laughs> I know that's right. Yes. <laughs> and, like, I'll go in and I'll be, like, so are we, like, is it possible to do, like, both, like, a mask, like, mask look mm -hmm. and a femme look, which typically folks will mm -hmm. say, like, is, like, men's clothes and then women's clothes. And I, mm -hmm. like, I will ask, I'll say, like, please, like, give me both. Because, yes, like, I it. will wear both. And, like, yes. I'm going to look great <laughs> in both. In and then, yes. Right? And then it starts the conversation. So, like, if someone sees a picture of me wearing a tux, awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I hope I'd be looking daft and attractive and starting conversations. And let's say that, like, you can see, like, my, my shirt is unbuttoned, so... I present masculinely. I have been on testosterone. I have a flat chest. If someone sees this picture of me wearing masks and clothes and happens to see a like part of my like top surgery scar, then it starts mm. conversation. If someone sees mm. me wearing mm. a a mesh shirt or a like a sequin dress and I look masculine, they're gonna say, mm. Why is this masculine person? Probably they're gonna say, Why is this man wearing a dress? Regardless, they're starting conversation. And I am all about, one, just making people's internal understandings of humanity implode on themselves. Because we are taught mm -hmm. about humanity just incorrectly. And then we have to really yes. teach ourselves and unlearn all of the invalidation that has been our existence. And so, and I just, I just did like so much random words flew out of my body, but that's how I understand. No, like that was, that was, it was, I'm, <laughs> I'm following you in this. I'm following you in this because it's just so relatable, just out in public, just, ha just being there starts conversation, you know? And I'm more of an introvert. I truly believe deep down in my soul and my heart, like, if I'm out in public, like, I generally don't go up to talk to people first, you know? People generally come mm. up to me, and then it's, oh, okay, and then the personality comes out, you know what I mean? Like, I normally just keep to myself because, you know, it's just kind of like you never really want to offend anyone. You never want to, you just don't want to cross boundaries with people that you just don't know, like, you know? And so I'm always welcoming and inviting, but conversation is conversation. So if you come up to have conversation, then let's let's talk, let's have that conversation, let's have, Let's let's have dialogue, you know, let's both arrive at the same end point or at the same end game, you know, and then walk away from the situation respecting one another. So I'm all for that 
100%. And yes, whether whatever it is that you're wearing, like, it shouldn't be that that identifies you. It should be you as your person that identifies you. So, yes. Mm, full, full, yes. Also, wait, speaking of both representation and education and conversation, let's talk about the documentary series that you were in, which is literally all of those things. <laughs> so, it also, was a wait, let me say, I have watched, I watched the entire series. I, I did it all for like two days, and it was incredible. I so what? So so what did you? What what was your thought process on it? Thought process on it? As another trans individual, like how did you view what had went on? Because I'm gonna be honest, I have some mixed emotions yeah. about it. But <laughs> I, I just okay. The first thing that popped into my mind is there was one. There was one like event, kind of like sequence of events that happened where you and uh, I want to say Brie, it was Brie, just mm -hmm. had like completely different view. Complete like like yes. it was the same thing, and like Brie was all the way over here, and you were like hell no over here. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because I was like, this is so important because for starters, just because you're both women, just because you're both trans women, just because like you share that aspect doesn't mean that you're going to think the same thing or want the same thing or anything. Mm -hmm. But for someone who is not trans watching that, like, I hope that that both direct and indirect message of like, look, trans people think different things as like the bit yeah. of like, you should already know this. Um, but then like for me, I liked it because I was like, oh my gosh, we're seeing an authentic argument. And like, yeah. that, that like you don't have to hate the person. You don't have to love the person. You don't ever have to agree with the person. And you can still respect the person. Yeah. Like, and the fact that, like, so I, I, as I was watching, I was like, oh, oh. Like, I was not expecting what, like, I don't even remember what it was, but I remember, like, pausing it and being like, oh. I was like, I was going to message you, but I was like, I don't know if... Or, like what? <laughs> so, but like, so, like that was one part that so, I, that I just like genuinely was like. So, okay, let me let me let me rewind back. So I remember filming that scene, and you know I had just flew in from so back during that time, like mm. ooh, this is like last October to November we were filming, but I was doing a lot of flying, just back and forth, back and forth, like to and from Miami for whatever events that I had going on before COVID had just stressed everybody out and stressed everybody down. And when we had filmed that scene, I was just kind of at that last, you know how you just have that breakdown moment, like that, oh, just yeah. that. So I was just really getting into one of those and we were having our, we were having a reunion. I think Elle had already moved to LA at that point. Mm -hmm. And it was just really me and Brielle. And they didn't tell us we were going to be filming, you know? So I'm just getting off the plane. So that outfit I had on, I had just touched down in Miami and then hopped in the Uber and went over, you know, so we could just have a little reunion and they wound up filming it. And so, you know, Brielle had, you know, a close friend of hers that was there. Um, Y'all didn't see her behind the scenes, but she was there and you had the producer that was there. And then, you know, you had the photographer, the, the probably maybe five of us. There. But the conversation was between me and Brielle, and I forgot what topic kind of off. But I think we were talking about more so along the lines of Brielle was saying that she did not go out and do the work without being compensated for the work, basically. And my view on the mm. situation was well, if you don't show up, then who's there to represent in excellence? You know what I mean? And then it was a comparison of, well, I don't understand how you can write a check to Laverne Cox for X, Y, and Z, or this person over here for X, Y, and Z. And then when it comes down to people that are in the middle, they don't see the same, you know, the same monetary value, basically. And for me, I guess me and my transition at that point, I'm probably just about over a year at that point in my transition. And not even a year at that point. But for me to hear that and see that, you know, she's been 
in her transition for almost 15 to 20 years now. So it's a big difference in terms of her still showing up versus me showing up. But at the same time, like, how do you say it? I don't discriminate when it comes down to the transgender identity. When it comes down to, there's a lot of, we need to help African-American trans women of color. Yes, I understand that. But I also advocate for everybody else because my skin color is not the only color. You know, mm -hmm. we have our Latin Americans, we have our Caucasian Americans, we had Filipinos. They were being discriminated against against Trump for a long time when it came down to the whole coronavirus pandemic. And so, again, I had made a video about this and it really is not one particular race. Yes, all lives matter. We understand that. But at the same time, it's just like everybody wants to be acknowledged. And you have to acknowledge everyone in that. So we just kind of it really was us butting heads, basically, just where it came down to me still wanting us to show up in excellence if we can. You know what I mean? Versus yeah. the monetary aspect of it. You know, and I feel like the work that I've done, it's like what I did for free, the services that I've done for free in reference to my advocacy work, it's come back around to me full circle. Oh, so I'm glad that I kept on the track that I did because I feel like if I would have not shown up to some of the events that I did, you know what I mean, where I was just lending my voice, you know, I feel like I wouldn't be here today. And I think that that's something that I also want to continue to do is to reach out and step out and be an outlet and be a resource for people, you know, without feeling the pressure of, I, I don't know, like I just, but for me, like, I don't know, like, it was just weird. It, you know, the producer called us, it was like, okay, so I see what's going on here. You're Malcolm X and you're Martin Luther King. And yeah. so that's how we were really, that's how the, the producer was just like, yeah, I see what's going on here. And then it was Brielle's good friend that had, um, she was just like, okay, I understand too. And Brielle was saying like, you know, well, I'm privileged because I have a job and I have this and I have that. And, mm. you know, everybody's privilege looks a little bit different. And so, how do you say it? It was just, I'm trying to say stuff, but I'm not trying to say too much because, I, you know, that yeah. was really, it was, it was an intense scene. And after that scene, you know, me and Brielle sat and we talked and I was just like, I would, listen, I'm not trying to come at you any kind of way. You know, we can agree to disagree and then it does get personal and it does, you know, it does go left in certain situations. And then there was another girl that was there as well that, Okay, I might be seeing a little too, but there was another girl that was there as well that was kind of in a really rough situation. And um, I know Brielle was helping her out at the time. So it's just kind of like when you are in a position where you have to show people your worth, I understand where Brielle was coming from in mm -hmm. reference to I can't show up for free. You know what I mean? Because there are girls that are not as privileged to be able to even show up for free. You're taking advantage. Whereas for me, it's just kind of like, well, I can show up for free knowing that I still have the support that I do, you know what I mean? And still be able to oh, yeah. show up in excellence for everyone else. And I think that it was just kind of like, it was just a difference of values, but it was definitely tough. And I will tell you that that was personally not one of my most favorite scenes because I don't ever want to disrespect anybody else in any message that I have, period. I work with a lot of nonprofit organizations, a lot mm -hmm. of different, you know, people see those kinds of things and while i understand it's entertainment for some that may not necessarily understand directly what it is it may be a form of entertainment but you know there we do have different views like you mentioned but also yeah. too, like i work with a lot of different people i work with a lot of different organizations and i don't ever want someone to view me in a moment of being discriminatory against another race or anything like that so it was just really trying to keep everything on balance or keep everything on tune and just staying true to yeah. me, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it was it was a lot. It was a lot. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my gosh. I didn't even realize all of the when did I I must have watched it months ago. As soon as you said I was like, Oh, it's all coming back it's it's coming back now. And the truth is is that like neither of you are wrong. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yes, it's like, it's you know, we all have our... Ooh, oh, my... <laughs> come on out! I was, yes, we all, like, keep landing we on me. All, we all have our differences of opinions and views, and, you know, she's not wrong for the way that she feels. I don't think that I'm wrong for the way that I feel. And I know that 
I'm glad that we were able to provide that content so that people can kind of see something different and choose their own avenue and know that there's a great possibility or a great outcome at the end of all of that. Whatever decision or whatever road you decide to take, you know. Yeah. It's there for you. And it's one that will lead to success either way. So also <laughs> That was not my favorite scene. It happens to be one of my most remembered scenes. <laughs> yes, it's definitely a remembered <laughs> scene for sure. Wanted to make that clear that I am so not a fan of animosity that I was, I was like, ah, but I was also like, but there's a reason why this is still in the film, right? Like everything has an educational purpose. Everything mm -hmm. is there for a reason. And I'm trying to remember, oh God, I wish my memory was, was like whipping up some like images for me. But I remember that all three of you are so different. Like in what, like in your personal journeys, in so I'm like thinking, oh my gosh, this fly is really coming to me. But like, I'm, I'm trying, <laughs> please correct me if I'm wrong. What, does L also use they, them pronouns? Um, I believe so, but I'm not 100% sure because, so I'm going to give you the real tea on this too. Yeah. I felt like there, there, there were, there were a lot of different stories that were kind of played into, but we all viewed ourselves very differently. You know, as you saw the interaction between me and Brielle, it, we had a very strong difference of opinion. Um, I felt like. I don't know, like, I just felt like this necessarily wasn't the message that I kind of wanted to stand beside, just because when I think of my mm -hmm. transition, I think of us taking the scientific tools in order to go from one gender to the next. So when it came down to being on hormones, when it came down to talking about surgeries, when it came down to talking about all the things that I thought were very important, I feel like that necessarily wasn't at the forefront and providing resources for people like you know what i mean so a lot of part of like my llc and me rebuilding myself was really to rebuild myself over top of what that necessarily was because mm. i feel like it didn't really serve the purpose that i signed on for it to do but i felt like i had to kind of i felt like i had to kind of like just really give it extra just to like you know what i mean show the outcome and I don't know, like, it's just, it's so weird. It's so weird. Like, I feel like if you were to watch, like, the first few episodes versus, like, look at my Instagram page, for example, you know what I mean? It's oh, like, yeah. It's really, like, after, like, it was, it just did not add up. You know what I mean? And so, there yeah, will be another, I mean, there will be another, the way that there will be so much more work. But I also, at that point, I had vowed that, this, that I would never let someone else tell my story um, because, mm. I feel like what you think is is important in your story sometimes definitely gets overlooked at by other people who may not understand exactly what it is that you're going through. They may relate to it. They may say, oh, you know, I've seen this happen. They may have experience with it. But I feel like a lot of times, like, what you actually want to pursue or portray on camera, on film, like, it can definitely get, like, overshadowed. And I will tell you too, like even in the scene with me and Brielle, there was a lot of editing that was done. There was a lot of editing. There were mm. a lot of pieces that were left out. So, yeah. But, and honestly, like that's also such a good point that even as whether like models or like real life actors or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. sometimes we still don't even have the ability to tell our own stories. Like and, even and if the yeah. like the director or the producer or the videographer or whoever it is, like they can all be trans or queer or or everything and all, right? And yeah. still, like we may not be able to have our voice heard in the way that we want our voice to be heard, or like that like you're saying with editing, like editing there, can be so editing scary. Is, it's a monster. It's a monster, and then it's just kind of like. I don't know, like, I feel like you just, at the end, of, like, when I, I'm going to tell you, when I was done filming it, I had felt like, just when I watched it, I was just like, I don't want no parts of this. 
this was what was in my contract and I'm done at this point, you know what I mean? And I'm going to go ahead and continue to walk through other doors and walk through other avenues mm -hmm. um, just because. Yeah, it uh, wasn't for you. And that's fair. I mean, in all, like, the, the amazing thing is that at the end of the day, it is representation. It is, it is like, you yes. on, like, all over different platforms, like sharing yourself with the world. And, this that is, and if that is just but one of the stepping stones on your path to excellence, where you already are That's continuing, yes. you know, <laughs> then like, then it makes sense. It makes sense. But that's, oh, every entertainment industry complicated. <laughs> yes, oh it, it is God. very, it is very complicated, at least. I will tell you, at least with corporate, it's just black and white. There's a rule book. There, you know, but it's entertainment. Like, you know, you have to really give the mask. You have to put out something to the mask that is going to catch. And, you know. Yeah. For she kids. And I think that's also why they keep holding on to the narrative. Like, with the non-supportive families, you know, begging for acceptance. Like, that's a lot of the reason why they kind of hold on to those narratives. Because that's what people kind of cling to. So, I just wanted to break, 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 break the cycle. I just really wanted to break it. You know what I mean? And I will say, I did go back and watch it. And I will say that I am happy that I am still the same person I set out to strive to be in the very beginning of us filming. You know what I mean? When I said I wanted to actually walk in excellence and continue to show up at my best no matter what, period. That has been it since. And I've stepped on several different platforms in my best. You know what I mean? And everybody's best is different. So I'm just happy that I'm still, that I'm consistent. That was the whole yeah. point. I wanted to really look at the growth and see how consistent I was with elevating, stepping it up, stepping it up. And yes. But there was so well, much that they didn't show up. Like, honey, oh, I was on first class flights, every, like all through back and forth. Baby, it was so much that was not shown. Like, I remember we filmed the first episode in, like, a... We were on, like, the 16th floor in a high-rise in Sunny Isles. Um, so I will tell you my secret. One of my... My degree in hospitality management and tourism, a lot of my colleagues, basically, we work in the industry. So I've been able to fly free for over seven years now. You know what I mean? And a lot of times, like, when I'm flying and traveling, like, I'm first class... I'm getting tore up to and from, and then a lot of my friends work in hotels. So I love Marriott. That's my preferred. My rooms are like less than 60 bucks a night. So this, the things that I can do or what I was able to do, you know what I mean? It's like I was pushing it. And I remember when I think we were, we were in the, the first time we filmed, I was in Miami. I went from Miami to Atlanta, from Atlanta to LA, from LA back to New York. Then I went from New York back home to Philly for a day or two and flew back out to Miami afterwards. Like, when I tell you, when I came home after that trip, I had to just sit my ass down for like a week just to recover. But yeah. I will tell you, being trans, there's not very many, there's not very many, I didn't feel like at the time there were a lot of opportunities. So my opportunities, I saw they were far and wide and I was like, you know what, I've got to go the extra mile in order to make it happen. You know what I mean? I've got to go the extra mile in order to bring myself around this, you know? Yeah. And here we are today. I sit in my chair in my office at home with three different computer monitors. And I'm like, yes, did you did that? Yeah. You did that. And yes. yes. Oh, OK. Well, so, I want all of those secrets to be my lived reality. Oh, my God. God. If you, a, if you need a bag handler or like a little smile human to stand, like have with you, yeah. like I will be. <laughs> don't play, don't play now, because I'm like, hey, we're going to LA. You, you, come on, so let's go, let's go. We are. We'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you are like, I'm just so grateful that, like, the world has you in it to be like literally if you don't expect greatness then like you're not you gonna get it, it? Right. yeah like yeah. you have like you have to have that you have to know yourself you have to i think that that's yeah. what it is it's like you know that you're like like no nothing there is no tangible paper 
like diamonds, et cetera, that can equal our true worth. And I think that we yes. carry that with us. And that's a part of like what people need to see. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Oh my gosh. Well, we, oh my gosh, we like are at the end of our lives. But before, oh that, was, that <laughs> was so quick. You know, I, <laughs> I did. Oh my god! And we touched on so many different things. <laughs> we were like, and here are your different episodes in our hour. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. And so, do you have any like? Is there like a quote or like a mantra or anything that like you think of when you need like that extra like push or like to rem like to like get out of like a downward spiral or any of those things, I'd be intrigued. You know what? <laughs> I would say whenever I get ready to walk into a room and occupy a space, oh my God, you're like the second person that's asked me that. Whenever I get ready to walk into a room and occupy a space, I literally, you know, you're in the elevator, I look in the mirror and I go, bitch, you got this, let's do it. Suck it in, let's go. And I push through in my six inch heels and we, we, we're here. We're here. Yes. Okay, so yeah. like affirmations that are like, yeah, yes. you're you, a bad you, thing. You, yes, like you have to, you have to. Even when I feel like, okay, you could have did it. Like, and you're always your own worst enemy, but yeah, you just have to affirm it yourself. Like, bitch, I got this. Yes. It's now or never. I'm pushing you out. Let's go. And yeah, yeah you just have to go. Say no more. And how are you? Oh how my are gosh. you? What do you I... want? Pass me a secret. Oh Lord. Let me think. I'm working on affirmations. I... It's breaking up. What's going on here? Okay. okay. Sorry. Okay. Phone... There we go. Yes. Technology. Yes, they tell us um... it's, it's yeah. <laughs> They're telling us, oh my gosh, say your secret, then leave. Um, okay, technology. Um, I would say, like, honestly, my thing that has helped me so much is that I, in therapy, am finally starting to realize how much invalidation I've experienced my entire life. Mm -hmm. Whether it was from society, from my educational environment, and even from people who I love and love me deeply, right? Like, the mm -hmm. invalidation of knowing that I was trans from mm -hmm. younger than three years old and trying to find ways to express that, but then not being heard, not being listened to, and then mm -hmm. being told that I was wrong, being told that mm -hmm. that is not what it is. And so for me, like look, my ways of like navigating and taking up space have been that I need to always be conscious of like what, is, what thoughts are going through my mind and like what mm -hmm. narrative I'm telling myself. Because yeah. just because I experienced something, I'm starting to realize that like the traumas that I've experienced or mm -hmm. like the different ways in which my relationships have played out are going to affect the ways in which I'm going to understand that experience. Mm -hmm. And so rather than, and I know that I've been feeling extremely attacked and threatened lately, but then when I remove myself from the actual experience mm -hmm. that happened, I'm like, oh, you're bringing these other experiences into that with you. Mm -hmm. It's not that you're being invalidated or that you're being uh, told that you're less than or that you aren't valued. It's that like you're taking those things from those other experiences. So mm -hmm. my, exactly. And so like my tip for myself is just be, I tell myself thoughts are sensations of the mind. Thoughts are just sensations of the mind and the mind can create many sensations. And then I can then look at the thoughts that my mind has generated and say, hmm, your emotions are valid, but is that thought justified? Like in reality, what would you say to someone else if they told you that that is their thought? And then I try and interact with my own mind as if it's a third yeah. party. <laughs> oh my <laughs> to God. Like, okay. <laughs> to be like, okay, like, what are you working on over here that I need to like, start to take away these these unhealthy habits and yeah. the mental demons and exactly and so for me it's just being able to register like no stop telling mm -hmm. yourself 
that like that you aren't worthy or that you aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. Like understand that that just because that's something that you've been told doesn't mean that that yeah. is true. And then Absolutely. just like you said, like looking in the mirror and dead after being like, you're, you're a bad bitch. Stand up taller. You're a bad bitch. Okay, okay like uh, legit, yes, yes. Let's go. I know you like it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Because that is, so like for me, it's all about like I'm trying to be living as, as oh, what's the word? It's not. It is as consciously as possible, but like knowing that like self work is forever, yes. and like I need to consistently put in this work and need to consistently pay attention and give it all of the love and the cherishment that it needs. Otherwise, these old habits. These, these old things that I were told were truths are going to keep on ruling my life. And they shouldn't even have been ruling my life in the first place. In the first it's place, right. It's, it's not my fault that these goddamn Europeans and their colonialist views came over and were like, binary this, binary that. Mm -hmm. That's no good. I'm going to make this bland thing and I'm not even going to add any like sparkles or glitter to like, or nothing. Yeah. Just what? this dry and cold of Yes. Like no. Like that has it like that has harmed so many souls, so many lives, so many communities. Mm -hmm. And I'm even like doing the work and like realizing like how all of these different roles and rules and ideals have impacted like my like my my family's understanding mm -hmm. of ourselves as being Jewish um and like coming to America mm -hmm. and what does that look like and then being being like having white skin but then having mm -hmm. many white people say you're not white like we still want to kill you because you're Jewish mm -hmm. and so it's just like me finally being able to okay these thoughts nope that was some colonial motherfucker like mm. trying to make me feel bad about my glorious self i'm gonna put that one in the rewrite pile and then oh like let me check this like, mm -hmm. this anti this anti-blackness or this racist or this white supremacy that is like just casually not like just casually like in my life like no like you have to call that person those people like yeah. the work moral of the story is that like the the thoughts in our minds need mm -hmm. to be like studied like what type of like are you harming yourself how can you mm -hmm. be uplifting yourself yeah, uh, like reminding ourselves, like when we hear like xenophobic, transphobic, homophobic, racist, whatever the heck type stuff, that it is indeed our job to correct it. <laughs> that like yeah. we must, we must use our role. And so that was just. I feel like I just woo, another another one of those. Yes, you, you can't it. put you you can't put you can't put the questions just in a you like you have to be yes. It's so much that goes into it. There's so much emotion and passion that goes into it. So yes. it's just, we're doing the work. We're doing yes. the work. Yes. We're doing it well. And that's, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and we need to celebrate ourselves for doing the work and living, our, Ooh, living authentically, <laughs> like being unapologetic. And that mm -hmm. is what it's about. Because we yes. are creating we're not creating our narratives. We're living our narratives and we're sharing mm -hmm. our stories in all of their truths for mm -hmm. the, whether the younger or the older generation of trans folks who still haven't had the, the stories or the writings or right. whatever like us to know that our existences are vast and glorious and diverse. Mm -hmm. And so thank you so much for sharing yeah. this space and this time and we will definitely be doing this again because this yes. is thing. this is how <laughs> I was. End my week this is yes oh so thank you my love. yes thank you guys bye yes. bye, bye. <laughs> stay safe yes you too